There were nights in my adolescence where I was sitting on my parents' bed in the only room where we had cable at the time, watching a show with a crazy surrealist style and character designs that honestly should have given my traumatized ass some nightmares. But instead, it kept me so captivated that I never missed an episode. But after a few months of challenging myself to commit myself to a time frame of actually watching the show, which is a hard thing for a four or five year old to do, the show was gone. What was actually at the time my parents' HBO family trial ending, I saw as a show that I love being inexplicably lost forever. Years passed and eventually the surreal memories I had with that show melted and meshed with the obscure and abstract associations you have with dreams. Sometimes you recollect something from your childhood that's so odd and visceral that you don't immediately associate it with reality, and that eventually became the outcome for this mysterious show that I couldn't remember the name of. Countless episodes faded away into some adjacent recess in my brain, and I wasn't sure after a long time whether I had made the show up or not. And even if I wanted to remember it, I really couldn't because I couldn't remember the name of the show. But eventually I ended up googling revolting slob and it all came coming back to me real quick. The word exacerbated huh? is used to describe something uh, getting worse. Like an explosion. Uh. Crashbox has got a bob, gang. So about a year ago I recorded the video, I intended to upload it, and then I deleted five I deleted five months of videos that I had backlogged for this channel. I vowed never uh, never to upload again. Oh, was that Corona? But Crashbox is special enough for me to at least give this a second try, and it's too much of a unique show for nearly the entirety of YouTube to turn a blind eye to it. So here's how Crashbox shaped my childhood, and if you're still watching, potentially yours. Finger and toe count and calculator needin' mathematical moron. Crashbox was a Canadian-American kids' educational variety game show in the same style as... Nothing I've ever seen before. The show was so original in its execution that I really can't pinpoint any origins for its style. Stop motion has always existed in children's media with Wallace and Gromit, Shaun the Sheep, Pingu to name a ping few. I hate that joke, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and the filmmakers at Leica Studios or the ones kept in Tim Burton's basement have always used the medium to push surrealism to a younger audience. But the visual attention getting style was utilized for something more than those other examples. For me, when you're looking at a show like Crashbox that has such a versatile and captivating approach to its animation, as opposed to something like Oswald, not shitting on Oswald, I always look three times before crossing the street, but learning was never as fun as it was when it was with Crashbox. The Antarctic's a good place to find penguins. Crimp's right and it proves his innocence. The show ran for about a year in 1999, when every network was seeking to fill an outlet in children's programming, only significantly dominated by Sesame Street. Just Adam Sandler. The show rotated through a series of different game show segments that concentrated on instructive, active listening. With about a month left of my college career, I've had about every conversation you can have about nostalgia from the 90s and 2000s with a bunch of my friends. There are some TV classics that everyone has seen, but despite my love for the show, other than my constant cinematographer and close friend Amanda, I've gotten little to no response when I bring up Crash Box. That probably has something to do with HBO's exclusivity, especially at the time, but regardless, this show made a significant impact on me as a kid, and I wanted to know why I was seemingly alone in that. The artistic style that slyly lured you into learning without knowing you were learning intrigued me. So I decided to do a little experiment and go out to the Boston Common and get some Marathon Runner's perspectives on Crashbox. I, I, I wrote this video a year ago. This part worked a lot better when everyone wasn't quarantined. But what I was able to do for this video was interview the president of the company that animated Crashbox, Cup of Coffee's Adam Shaheen. You're welcome. The interview was over email and I'm quarantined, so I will be playing both roles today. What were challenges you came across in designing an animated program for kids in an untraditional style with a primary objective of creating an engaging educational program? Well, kids are the adaptable ones, not the adult programming shows. Quickly became very evident that kids loved the different games being presented in a mixed design format. They found it way more engaging visually and that drew into playing along and ultimately learning. It also helped that HBO Family, a brand new player in the kids' TV world, was ready to separate themselves from the competition, and a mixed animated format was evident of that. 20 years later, we still get letters demonstrating the impact that this show had. What contributed to Crashbox having a short televised run? It was two seasons and 52 episodes, and HBO and Cup of Coffee and Planet Grande all agreed that it had run its course, and new but similarly unique objectives were to be had on new projects. A show like this will never be seen again in my opinion. Networks are 100% driven now by tapping existing brands and unfortunately have a lesser group of visionary creatives open to pushing new boundaries. 
what would you hope your young audience got out of the show? Receiving letters of praise almost 30 years later is a testament to the enjoyment brought by kids and parents alike. Notable in how something educational can also be outlandish and fun. There are more questions, and if you want to check out the full interview, I put the transcript down in the description. So check that out if you want. There's no way I could possibly go into how much I love Distraction News, Sketchpad, Psychomath, Here We Are, Haunted Mansion Party, Eddie Bull, 10 Second Radio, Scramble, Captain Bones, Pooper Scoop, Revolting Slob, Word Shake, Riddle Snake, Mug Shots, Like Totally Patient Sage, Think Tank, Dirty Pictures, and Lens McCracken. <gasps> Did I actually do that in the first? Oh my god! Yeah! But clearly the show was intended to work outside the conventions of networks that wanted easier to access content for children. Where today, as Mr. Shaheen said, Crashbox probably would have never been made. Was Crashbox revolutionary television? For some, probably. To watch something that out of the box, pun intended, at that age, really made me wonder whether I had imagined it myself. And isn't that the best compliment you can give something directed at that age range? Being infused with the endless limitations of a child's imagination to leave an unconventional but lasting impact? Also, that Eddie Bull soundtrack is a bop. If you want to check out more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and follow this channel on Facebook. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon, and if you are a supporter, then you get access to my videos a day in advance. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Think tank, dirty pictures, and lens of Kraken. Did I actually do that in the first? Oh my god! Yeah! Oh, I thought that was gonna take 20 minutes! I don't think I've ever been this happy. <laughs>